Yo, this is Craig Owens. This is Matt Good. And we're from the band Drugs, and you're watching the Kerrang! Video Podcast. Kerrang! Right, so um, I mean, you're on the UK tour at the moment. How's it been going? Uh, amazing. It's been overwhelming, I think would probably be the word that we would use. Uh, it's pretty crazy to have a record out a week. Um, to come over here and headline and sell out venues yeah. um, from a band that hasn't been together a year. We're very thankful and just excited to be here. Absolutely. Definitely surpassed any expectation I had coming into it. So, I mean, you can never complain when you're in that situation, right? That's fantastic. I mean, you both haven't been to the UK for a little while. Quite a while, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. April of 2009 yeah. for me. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and shortly before that for me. Yeah. Is it how you remember this? Is it no, it's much? better. Right. Yeah. I think that's because the quality of life that I'm living is better too. I think yeah. this is a better experience. It's, it's a, you know, we're all really thankful to be here, to be playing music again, and to be in on the up and up, you know. And um, I think that it shows that we're all enjoying this tour much more than any other ones that we've done previously. This is definitely my favorite UK tour I've ever done, yeah. and I think the next one will be better, and the next one will be better. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. You made some lifestyle changes in the last yes, year. Yes, so. yes. Um, are you seeing touring through a, a different pair of eyes now? Ah, 100%. Um, I'm actually enjoying myself um, and I find that I play better. I can breathe on stage. I'm a happier person. Um, I'd, I'd like to assume that I'm more pleasant to be around. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> You're great. I love you. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's just, it's a lot more fun and I'm, I'm a happy guy now. You know, I'm not so tortured artist sad you know I'm just I'm a happy guy and I'm stoked to be here and I'm gonna be the best me that I can be so how many songs did you write initially for this album because I understand <laughs> we wrote probably close to a hundred wow. I would assume 50 so, to 100 so somewhere many. hidden within there um, <laughs> so many so many so many I mean we did pre-production probably at least 30 at least yeah. So and before that we had tons of ideas coming in I mean there's still songs like someone will randomly play them like I forgot that even existed I mean, yeah. it happens all the time yeah <laughs> yep we had a little bit of time you know and after the whole situation with my past band I wanted to make sure that I had actually gave myself some time off I hadn't had time off um, a substantial amount of time off in you know since I was 15 years old so right. since I you know became an adult you mm -hmm. know so I wanted to make sure I had time off and management wanted to make sure that the band organically came together and wasn't some thrown together project yeah. So it took a good year or so to get in the studio, and the whole time we were just like, oh, let's go in the studio next month. We heard it was going to be the next month, so we wrote more songs, and then we heard it was going to be the next month, so we wrote more, and that's, it was kind of the cycle for a little while. Yeah. I mean, how, how, I mean, what kind of things made it through the drugs filter? You know, what kind of um, songs did you leave behind? Um, I think there was a lot of poppier songs that we left behind. I think there was a lot of slower songs that we left behind. We wanted to make sure that this record was aggressive and fast and full of a lot of energy and pep, I guess. You know, pep's mm. a really cheesy word, but um, just a lot of energy. That's true, though. Yeah, and, and we wanted to make sure that it was heavy and that it would it would be a new journey but still um, appeal to our past fans. That way we didn't alienate any mm. of our fans um, from any of the past bands. So I think, I think we did pretty well in, in doing that moving forward. Yeah, me too. I mean, like, a lot of times, too... We have a lot of songs, like we would sit down and we'd just have like little listening sessions as a group and we'd be like, you know, like kind of like rate this song. You know, how good do you think that is? I don't know. It's not as good as that one, but it's still pretty cool. Maybe, you know, so we would go through and we constantly just like re-listen to everything and filter things out. So, you know, we obviously just want the best of the best. Going in with that many songs, you can really focus in on what it is that you want to sound like yeah. and what you want the record to sound like. And I think that that's something that um, we had to our advantage, time, you know, time helped us a lot. So. I mean, do you think you were writing right until the last minute? Did you oh my gosh, yes, we were. We absolutely yeah. were. I mean, half the re more than half of the record was done. We were like, we're two songs short. You know, what are we going to do? And we took like a week off. I went home and wrote, um, started writing Sex Life. Right. And that ended up being it. And then when we got back, we we're like, okay, well, we're one really heavy song away. And then um, Stop Reading and Start Doing Push-Ups was written, the very last song, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And... Uh, you know, it, that was up until like the last couple days. Um, tell us about the sex life viral video. Um, yeah, the, the sex life viral video. I just thing to do. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, I was so nervous. <laughs> yeah, I was so nervous. Um, you know, because that's not, I, I go in and I, I play shows or I write music or something like that. I don't go in and act with porn stars. You know what I mean? I didn't know what to do. 
it was scary for me. It was really fun, and you know, Raven, the the girl, um, the uh, adult star that was in it with me, made me feel really comfortable. We wanted to make sure we had a professional that could make me feel comfortable and and not out of the ordinary, and you know, and also wouldn't mind having that said about her, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to do something that really got the message of the song across. It's all about the music for yeah. us, and, and we wanted to make sure that um, people understood what that song was. Uh, the writing on this record, compared to all my other writing experiences, I tried to be much more blunt and, and really, I have a lot to say, mm -hmm. I had a lot to say, and I was able to do it this time because I wanted to make sure that the lyrics said it. Yeah. I didn't want there to be any room for interpretation, um, and while there always will be, as you know, as individuals, we always pertain, we, we, we adapt the song around our situations and our lives and our relationships. Um, I wanted to make sure that, that at least I knew that I tried my best to put it, the message out right in front for everyone to see. And, and that song in particular was one that meant a lot to me. Um, and I, uh, we, uh, we did what we had to do to make sure that people paid attention to it. And it worked. It absolutely worked. Um, I mean, do you both think that a lot of people are preoccupied with celebrity kind of, you know, the very nitty gritty details of celebrities' personal lives and, instead of focusing on their own? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's within our nature. I do it. <laughs> I do it. I mean, I'm sure Matt does it. I think we all do it, and, and it's just something buried in our subconscious, I think, throughout time. Uh, watching movies, watching different TV programs, all that different stuff. Uh, you know, our society is based around this sexual, you know, um, kind of kind of thing. Especially in America, it's really just very sexual, and you know, our royalty are our celebrities. You know, and we're right. always wondering what it is that they are, you know, doing, and and uh, you know, we're we're interested. I mean, but. You, I mean, I'm in, just as interested in that as my neighbors or something like that. It's just other people's lives that intrigue us, I think, and and uh, that you know, it's it's to no one's fault. Um, it's just it's just how we're wired as humans. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, celebrity is the royalty mm -hmm. of America. Who who are the king and queen? Oh my uh, gosh, that'd be a good one. I mean, right now it's a battle between Lady Gaga and Oprah. I would assume. Yeah. Those are two of the pretty massive queens over there. And yeah. King, I don't know. I think. Is Charlie uh, Sheen the king up No. <laughs> we can, like Johnny Depp, man. Yeah, Johnny Depp might be, but... Brad Pitt, maybe? Yeah, they, I mean, maybe... Um, I, I, I mean, know. no, I was thinking more like George Clooney or someone. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's. I think that the women have, have the hold on it, to be honest. I think Lady Gaga yeah. and Oprah are much more influential than any of the other guys that we just mentioned. Oprah is probably, yeah, she's got to be the most influential The TV woman. channels and magazines and all the she stuff that she does. She has her own TV station now. Right. OWN, the Oprah Winfrey Network. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Crazy, coming from a talk host to that. It's pretty yeah. brilliant. You're hitting a, a sort of big US tour mm -hmm. in about uh, eight, nine days time uh, yep. with Icy Stars and Black Veil Brides. Yep, they? yep. <coughs> um, are you looking forward to sort of uh, kind of carving your own trench out in the US now? Yeah, yeah, really excited. It's like, you know, you go out, like we did a little tour like when the record hadn't come out yet, but this is going to be our first tour since the record's been out, and this is really going to be our chance to like, you know, show what we're about, show who we are, you know, like kind of like prove ourselves, because, you know, because of the band having so much history, the members, previous bands, whatnot, you know, people put a lot of expectations on us, and there's a lot of hype around it, so this is our chance to go in and prove like, you know, we thrive it's worth it. Like that, yeah. yeah, like it's now, now it's like, okay, well, you heard all this stuff, and you expect all this stuff, so now we're going to deliver all this stuff, and then it just gets even better, and it's fun, and we have friends on the tour, it's just, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be great, I'm really excited. Yeah, and you've got Warped coming up. Right? Yeah, Warped Tour is going to be amazing, yeah. and hopefully a bunch of festivals and stuff like that in between. Yeah, so um, it, it seems like uh, a tour that kind of sorts the men out from the boys. It and, does, and the oh women my gosh. Out from the girls. Yeah, and thankfully we've all done it five times, you yeah. know, we've all done it quite a bit. Yeah. Um, mm. Tell us the t a typical day on Warped, because you can't sleep until five, you can't do the no, usual tour stuff. Yeah. It's work. Uh, I don't know. I mean, for me, I would I would wake up in the morning, uh, hopefully before the doors are open. And I'd walk around and just like see who was around and maybe say hi, grab a coffee, 
And then I'd play video games for about as long as I possibly could until we played. <laughs> and then I'd wait till the sun went down because I don't like the sun. And uh, and then I'd go hang out a lot and talk to fans and do signings and whatever. Play in between any time you, yeah. you do that. Yeah, exactly. Because it's brutal. Because like, oh, it is. It's no be, joke, man. America in the summer is ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. You've seen how humid. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's gnarly. It, it's really crazy. Yeah, but it's gonna be a really fun experience, and it will sort of sort the men out from you know the boys, and it's it's gonna be it's gonna be really good. I can't get a tan this summer, man. Seriously, it's gonna ruin my whole image. <laughs> can't can't do it. You have to get an umbrella. Yeah, I was gonna suggest a nice parasol for the uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. the dates. So um, I mean, do you have any plans to come back? You know, without spoiling any surprises, mm-hmm. but do you have any? Uh, immediate plans to come back to the UK after the success. We of this we trip. have none, honestly. Um, nothing even that I can't can't not tell. Um, we we have none. Um, but I promise we will be back before the end of the year. I mean, that's just something that's going to happen. We're gonna take, you know, uh, especially my career personally. I'm gonna take it much more seriously coming over here. And as a band, we're going to, you know, consider this one of our main markets to come over and play to. And it's not gonna be a once every two years, once a year thing. It's gonna be a couple times a year. And uh, I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited because, like I said, I think there's a lot of amazing, intelligent, passionate human beings over here who, who uh, I really want to play music for. Brilliant. Well, uh, best of luck with the, thank you, thank you, uh, tomorrow night and the U.S. tour, and we'll, we'll see you. you very soon. Cool. Sounds good.